In this video, we're going to look at how to edit a movie in Lightworks. Now, if you've watched my previous videos on Lightworks on my channel, you'll notice that I was using a version, I think 11 or 12. Now, Lightworks 14, which is the version I'm using, is quite a bit different from the previous versions. So if you were using the old version of Lightworks, I would highly recommend that you update to the new one because I think the improvements are amazing. Let's start off with a new project. I'm going to just call it First Movie. In the frame rate, I'm going to choose Auto and press Create. Now, I need to get my movies from my computer into Lightworks. Now, before we go any further, you filmed on a camera or you filmed on your phone, get those movies off the phone and off the camera and put them onto your computer in a folder all by themselves. Do not dump those movies onto your desktop because the mess you're going to create is going to be really hard to tidy up. So that's advice number one. Let's go and get the movies. I've already gone to the folder and I've got a few movies. Now, I have to admit, I didn't actually film these movies. I, I got these movies from a great website, which uh, I'll put at the end of this movie, just so that you know where I got them from. Let's grab all the files simply by clicking on this top button here and clicking on the import button. A few seconds later, all the movies are in. Now, I'm on my laptop, so my screen is a lot smaller. So I'm going to click on this little button over here, and that gives me a much smaller view, but it makes my life a lot easier. Now, before we go any further, I've got quite a few clips here. Now, it could be that your movie only consists of one clip or three clips. That's okay, but if, like me, you end up with a whole bunch of movie clips and you're trying to organize yourself, what I would do, uh, what I would recommend, is you go into this column that's called the Real ID, and just start renaming things. Now, what I like to do is just put a numbers next to the movie clips so that I can see which clip is number one and so on and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename a few of them. So that's number one, number two. I'm going to go to number three here. I'm going to go to number four. Let's go to the traffic scene as number five number six. Now, of course, if you take just a little bit of time, I'm now just randomly assigning numbers over here. But if you do this, it makes your life incredibly easy later. If I now click on the real ID, you can see that all my movie clips are now in order. And this really helps me because now I don't have to go searching for where my clips are. If you're using iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, you're going to be quite used to just picking up clips, dropping them into your movie, and kind of cutting and deleting stuff as you go along. Now, Lightworks, you can do that, but it's quite painful. So what Lightworks will ask you to do is double click on a clip, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press play. It's not a great, interesting one. And I'm going to stop it there. This is where I would like to start my movie. So on my keyboard, I'm going to press the button I. I'm going to press play. Just let it play for about five seconds. Stop the movie and press O. That is my in and that is my out. Now, if you make a mistake, you can, of course, move your ins and outs wherever you want to. But what I'm telling Lightworks is, although my clip is 30 seconds long, I just only need that little bit of a movie clip there. I'm going to go to number two. I'm going to mark the ins and outs there, like so. And that should be enough there. I'm going to go to clip number three, like so. Now, you don't have to stop the movie to mark it in and out. You can actually press your space bar. Just press I on your keyboard. And when you think you're ready, press O on your keyboard to mark it out. Let's go to clip number four. Double click that. I'm going to just press an I over here. I'm going to press an O roughly there. And let's go to that last one. Press an I and press an O. There you go. So I've got only five clips. I'm not going to do all 13 of them. And I've marked the ins and outs. Now, the ins and outs, although it seems kind of boring when you're doing it, it saves you hours of time later. So let's go to our Edit button. And what you can see is I've got a huge timeline. I don't need it that big, so I'm just going to make it smaller, like so. I've got all my clips, but again, I can't see them because I'm on a laptop. So I'm going to press on that button there just to get a list view. So anytime I lose the order of my movie, I can just click on the real ID button and my movies are back in order. 
couple of things I want to do. I, let's resize that window so I can actually see my movie. So I like to see it nice and big. And I notice that my movie is called Sequence 1. I'm going to rename that by clicking on the button Everything. And you can see that there's an empty movie called Sequence 1. I would like to call this Film 1, so it just sounds better. I'm going to go and click back on Clips. And let's start with the city scene. And um, what you'll notice, I've got a red marker and an empty timeline. This is a movie which I haven't made yet. If I move the red line, I'm actually moving in and out of my movie, but I haven't got a movie to start with. So let's rewind back to the beginning, pick it up, and throw it into the timeline there. But because I marked an in and an out, it only picked up that part of the movie that I marked over here. That's really useful. Let's go to the busy intersection, and we'll throw that down there. And number three, over there. Number four, over here. And number five, over here, like so. Now you can see if we watch our movie, it will work quite well. We'll go from the first to the second movie, and so on and so on. So it's kind of doing its job right now, like that. Now you'll notice, as you're making a movie, that you marked an in and an out, but when you look at it in the movie, you kind of think, well, that is really lasting too long. I didn't want to be staring at that movie for five or six seconds. So how do we shorten a clip? Let's just zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do is you have to look very carefully here. As I move my mouse, you'll notice that the movie clip that I'm on starts to tell you where your mouse is. So if I go over here and I simply click my mouse, and I drag my mouse back. I really only wanted about three seconds, so let's just move it to about three seconds. And let's just watch that movie again, see what happens. Indeed, that's way better. And there's my intersection, and there's my thing there, yep. And there's the crossing the road. Okay, so we're, we're doing well over there. So we've got our small sections there. Let's just have a quick look as we go along. Yep, that's good. Oh, uh, let's make that a little bit shorter, simply because it will look better. Let's have a look, like so. Let's make that a little bit longer. So how do we make something longer? We go again to its end, and instead of moving it backwards, we move it forwards, and we can actually drag it out like so. And we go like this. Yep, that's a little bit better. That's what I wanted to do. So that is a really fast way of getting your ins and outs sorted out, dropping them into your movie, and then, of course, adjusting. And really, you're fine tuning. You're really editing the movie when you mark in your ins and outs. Now, let's, uh, let's deal with a clip we haven't done. Let's go to Times Square. I'm going to double click that. And you'll notice that it opens up a little window here. That's simply so that I can mark my in and my out. Now I've marked my in and out, and I would really like to put that there, which is a little bit harder now. So what I want to do is I really want to be able to move my red line to those beginning and ends of all my movie clips. Now you can do that simply by doing the forward and rewind over here. If you click, it will go backwards and forwards. I find the keyboard shortcuts of A to go backwards and S to go forwards, really useful. It stops me having to use the mouse all the time. I'm going to press S one more time, go to the end, and I'm going to now click on this button, which drops that movie into there. Perfect. I'm going to close this little clip down because I would like a much bigger window. Let's have a look what that looks like. That's quite nice. I, I want to make this a little bit longer, yep, like that. Now what I've noticed is I, I don't want this to just cut from the traffic to that scene there. So really what I want to do is I want to put a fade or a dissolve in there. And the way we can do that is by clicking on our VFX button. You'll notice it looks quite complicated. Don't get scared by that because we don't really need to worry about those colors there. I'm just going to make the timeline a bit bigger. There you go. And what I want to do is add a new effect. The effect I want to add, and you'll notice that when you click on it, it should just say favorite. So what we want to do is we want to put it on a mix, and it's a dissolve we want. So I'm going to pick it up, 
And I don't want it over there, and I don't want it over there. I actually want it half and half. So I want half of the old movie and half of the new movie to dissolve into one another. And you'll see that when I press play. It's that effect we see in so many movies and so many programs, and it looks amazing. Let's go back to our edit button, and you can see what the effect of that was. And there you go. You can see, let me just zoom out a little bit. And there's my whole movie so far. So we jump from one movie to another movie. And then when we get to this last cut over here, we actually use a dissolve just to make it look really nice. So what we've done in this video so far is we've grabbed our movies from our phone, we've put them on our computer, and then we've put them into Lightworks. We have ordered our movies, if we've got a lot of them, just to help us out. And most importantly, we marked some ins and some outs. We then put those movie clips into our timeline, and we've also used a dissolve to kind of give us a nice special effect. And for the fine tuning, we've just taken our mouse and moved the ends of clips around just to make sure that everything on that screen is exactly how we want it to look. So in the following videos, we're going to be dealing with titles, because they're really important, and of course, audio, which we have not touched in this video, because that's quite an important thing that we need a separate video for. So open up Lightworks and have a go at editing your own movies.